Pinson. Thank you, Ms. Hurst. I wonder at this time if we might have the roll call by section. Will you please stand as your section is called so that we can get an accurate number of the people who are here? I think we have this count. Please be seated. Mm -hmm. oh, 27 for the administrator, mm -hmm. 20 for the EAT, EAT section, general duty. Mm -hmm. Is this all the general duty? Five. Mm -hmm. Occupational health section. Mm -hmm. None. <coughs> Private duty section. Oh. <laughs> Will you please just start in the back and come down starting over on your left hand side and number and sit down as you call your number? Two, three, four. Yeah. In the middle aisle. <laughs> <laughs> Over on the right. <laughs> and we'll start back over here on the left hand side of the front. <laughs> Right next to Ms. Mahaffey. 35, 36, 37, 38, 47, Ms. Hill. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47
then we do have a quorum. We <laughs> <laughs> still have people in the door on the plate that haven't been counted. Well, so there's, there's this man. We have a quorum, that's all. That's the main thing. I'll get some. There's seats down on the front, Miss Poe. But there's more than that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it they will be coming back. later. Because these belong to the state. Uh-huh. Well, um, we'll, have, we'll know when we catch the battle. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll know how many presents. There are seats up uh, in the high balcony. later on, those of you who were not, who did not stand or who were not counted initially, who are coming in. At this time, we have 27 administrators, two for the EACT section, five 20, general duties. 20, 20, oh, yeah. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, I thought I said 20 for EACT section. Excuse me. General duty five, occupational health none, private duty six to five. <laughs> And 47 for public health, making a total of 164 before the group came in the door, who we hope to ask this bit later. Since there was not an issue of the meter circulated, we have to read the minutes of our last meeting. This will not take long. We need your approval. I'll ask the secretary at this time to meet, to read the minutes of our November 19 meeting. The regular meeting of the 5th District GSNA was held on Thursday, November 19, 1964 at St. Joseph's Infirmary. Called to order by the President, Ms. Garland. Prayer by Ms. Hudson Kathleen. The order of business was changed so that the nurses might see a film on Hawaii. Roll call by section, administrators 25, EACT 23, general duty 2, private duty 39, public health 23, occupational health 3, making a total of 115. Approval of minutes is circulated. Barfield, Bryce, Carrot. Report of the executive board meeting given by the secretary, Ms. Alford. Report of the treasurer. District report read by the treasurer, Ms. May. Motion to accept the report and place on file. May, sister Elizabeth Ann, carry. Register report read by the treasurer. Motion to accept and place this report on file. May, sister Elizabeth Ann, carry. Report of the executive secretary, Ms. Andrea, her written report. Recommendations of the Executive Board, read by the Secretary. 
One, that all regular business meetings mm -hmm. of the association be held at 4 p.m. instead of the alternate hour. Two, that Ms. Luther Mace be conferred life membership in the 5th District Association. <laughs> Motion to accept recommendation number one, all, Barfield. Discussion followed in regard to the time, 4 o'clock or 4.30 p.m. The original motion came from the private duty section to state 4.30 p.m. Motion by Ms. Zerks that the original motion be adopted, seconded by Ms. Morgan. The amendment to the motion carried 4, 84 against 23. The motion as amended to read at 4.30 p.m. carried. Motion to adopt recommendation number two, that Ms. Lisa may be, may be conferred life membership in the district association. Bryce Sanders, carried unanimously. Reports to the standing committees. Printing, Ms. Adkins reported 1,500 copies of the district meter circulated. Bylaws, proposed changes of the bylaws read by Ms. Barfield as information. Letter was read from Mr. McClellan by the president, Ms. Garland. A motion was made that the voting on the proposed revision to the bylaws be held at next annual meeting. Center, Missouri. Fall, 34, opposed, 54, motion law. A motion was made that the voting on the bylaws be deferred until the January meeting. Well, Barfield. Fall, 65, opposed, 30, motion carried. Legislation. Oral report given by the chairman, Ms. Ditchfield. A motion was made, made that the board of directors of the 5th District GSMA request the National Advisory Council on nursing training, Nurses Training to make available trainingship for professional nurses to all registered professional nurses who wish to prepare for teaching, administration, and supervisory positions for the entire time required to complete requirements for the baccalaureate degree. Hudson Mahaffey. Carried. Adjournment at 6.30 p.m. submitted by Jean M. Alford, Secretary. You've heard the reading of the minutes. Are there any corrections? I believe that Ms. Hudson gave the report of the Legislative Committee, didn't you, Mr. Hudson, at our November meeting instead of Ms. Fitchfield? I don't believe Ms. Fitchfield was here. Was she? I'm staying correct. I was thinking Ms. Hudson uh, gave her a report. <laughs> if there are no corrections, the minutes will stand approved then as read. I thought Ms. Hudson. No, uh, she didn't mm -hmm. know she was still chairman. She um, didn't we have uh, one communication I think will be of interest to you. I'll ask the secretary to read. This all uh, is in reference to the motion we just read, the recommendation that we write the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. And uh, they said, Dear Ms. Adkins, thank you for your letter in which you indicate the action of the 5th District Georgia State Nurses Association in regard to professional nurse traineeship. As you requested, the motion of the 5th District Nurses Association will be brought to the attention of the National Advisory Council when it meets. The council has not as yet been appointed, but we anticipate that they will meet in the near future. Sincerely yours, Jesse M. Scott, Chief, Division of Nursing. Thank you, Ms. Atkins. We'll listen to the report of the treasurer at this time, Ms. May. Thank you. 
Second. Been moved and second that this report be placed on the file. Is there any questions, comments? Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. <coughs> um, <coughs> somebody right there. Who so second the motion, please? Thank you. Good. Is there discussion? Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Motion is carried. Okay, fine. Thank you, Mr. May. At this time, I would like to introduce to you who have not met Mr. McClellan, our counselor and parliamentarian. Mr. McClellan's very busy in the legislation. We're most fortunate that he could come and be with us this afternoon. Mr. McClellan, we're glad you're here. <laughs> Here's a better one if you'd like this one. And we'll hear from our executive secretary at this time, Ms. Ashton. Well, I will not take the time to give you the report of the activities, but I can tell you one thing. Today, the telephone was really alive with the fact that many of them wanted to come down and pay the dues so they could vote. They were not members last year. We had 1,010 members with seven associates last year. 
We have 165 that have already, the EMA cards came in today. Now you wonder why you did not receive them when they were sent in before Christmas. Because they asked us to wait until they cleared the membership for 1964. We sent them immediately when we were able to do so, and they did come today. But we'll wait until today to find out about your July meeting, and the printers have promised us your scheduling card, and you will get your ANA card. Their envelopes are ready, and they will be in the mail within one hour after we get your scheduled card. We've been very busy. We invite all of you to come down to your headquarters and call on us if we may be of any assistance. Ms. Garland's asked me to give you a resume of the board meeting last night, and last night, it was Tuesday night, it's held at St. Joseph's. The one motion they had that the, the private duty asked that the registry budget for the professional nurses registry uh, be reviewed and reconsidered and brought into line with the anticipated annual registry income, and that is done on both the budgets. Uh, after the membership comes in, and it will be done by me. Other than that, uh, there were appointments of committees and uh, the verification of a referendum vote in regards to chief registrar, uh, not the chief registrar, but to a relief registrar. Very quiet meeting. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. <laughs> I believe everyone's here who's coming, and I think at this time we'll take up the item of business for which you all came for, I'm sure. Uh, we hope that you have the information that you need. We have tried to circulate three different times the requested information from individuals on the proposed change in bylaws. It was first circulated in the meter and then in a complete addition, Ms. Barfield's office circulated for us, and now we have another condensed form with the changes itemized as Ms. Barfield will give them to you. So at this time, we'll listen to Ms. Barfield as she gives her report. Tell Ms. Davis that she is a member. She She's a member, Ms. Davis. <laughs> Madam no. President, first of all, I would like to apologize to the group for an omission in the completed uh, what I thought was the completed edition of the proposed bylaws at the last meeting. I assure you that it was not intentional. It was an oversight. Um, I have the interest and concern of this association at heart just as much as any member in this room, I'm sure. Um, this is the, uh, these are the items that were omitted unintentionally. They should be added on if those of you who have the copies that were distributed at the last meeting, what would become page 10 after item, I mean after page 9, it's inserted under article 11 in the revised or amended uh, bylaws as were circulated last time I left out, I'm sorry, uh, some of the duties of the executive board. I have here the inserts for the completed editions as they were distributed at the last meeting, and I would like for you to take one if you would care to have it and add it to your um, the copies that we got we uh, gave out last last meeting. <laughs> I apologize for the omission. Again, as I said, it was not intentional. It was an oversight, and, and I'm very, very sorry. The private duty section sent me a request um, by special delivery letter, which we attempted to um, answer in this copy, which I hope that you have received as you came in the door. I understand we did 150 
And so some of you may not have gotten them because I believe our attendance has exceeded 150, which exceeded our expectations. Um, I'm sorry, but this is a condensed form uh, in accordance with their wishes, and I appreciate the private duty uh, section's um, feelings I'll need, and I hope that this is in answer to their request and will uh, meet their needs. The next time, I hope that they will see fit, though, to give the chairman of the bylaws committee a little more time, because I admit to you that I put in quite a few um, hours at midnight trying to uh, get this proposed and get it in order for it to be printed. I believe that the bylaws as revised according to the recommendations that the bylaws committee received from the sections and from the executive board have been printed in their uh, proposed changes in our district meter at the last meeting, and they were circulated as such. At the last meeting of this group in December, we presented to you a completed form of the bylaws as proposed to be amended. And today you have received this um, amended comparison of what is and what is proposed. This, these three, um, it seems, should be sufficient to acquaint you with the proposed changes of the bylaws for the 5th District. Madam President, I move that the proposed revisions of the bylaws be adopted. Those revisions would include references to the alumna associations to be deleted from the bylaws, editorial changes which would make our bylaws conform with those of the ANA model for district bylaws, which would include um, changing the wording of executive board to director of uh, board of directors. I move that the proposed bylaws as distributed as approved by the state committee on bylaws and by the executive board of this association be adopted. Who seconded? You've heard the motion and the second that the proposed revision of the bylaws be accepted. If there is discussion, we'll hear from you now. Well, Mr. Thank you, Mr. McClellan. In doing this, we are following a pattern that was set in 62, and um, the official vote was taken uh, in 62. Does this answer your question, Is there, is there other discussion? Madam Chairman, uh, may we ask for a, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a vote on proposed Article 
9 and proposed article 15. Well, would you please let the parliamentarian answer the question? I did not understand this lady over here made a specific motion to take up any particular article or any section separate. Maybe I didn't make myself clearly uh, understood to begin with. I think in the form of the motion put by the chairman who presented, that motion must now be put unless there is a substitute motion which would take precedence that either one section or more than one be taken up individually, or that all the sections be taken up individually. Well, then, Madam Chairman, I would uh, propose the substitute motion that article, the new article. Would you let us have this in your mm -hmm. Madam. Mm -hmm. Is there a second to this motion? Now, is there discussion to the substitute motion? If we're going to consider this, we have to vote on whether or not to consider it, and then we will, when we consider it, we will see what the trouble is, if it's trouble. Are you ready to vote on whether or not we are to consider the um, Article 9 and is this 15, 15 as uh, the motion carries? Those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. 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 Do we need a standing vote? <laughs> no. Don't think there's any doubt, but the no has. Our parliamentarian says he doesn't think there's any doubt but what the no's carried this. If you would like for us to count the votes, we'll be glad to do this. All right, those in favor, please stand. Now, 
and let them sit down so there won't be any question about it. Let's start over in the left-hand counter, uh, corner. Number yourself and sit down as you do so. <laughs> Yeah, you want to start off here? 34. 35. 38. 38. Miss Drive. Sit down as you call your number, please. Will the does please stand? on the left hand side let's clear that. Thirty nine, forty, forty one, forty six, forty three, forty four, forty five, forty six, forty seven, forty eight, forty nine, fifty six, fifty nine, fifty two, fifty three, fifty four, and the two over here below fifty seven. Fail. Fifty eight. Fifty eight, start over the back in the very corner. Seventy-six and ninety-nine. Mm -hmm. If we count hours. We can have the box back there. It's going to be right there. Yes. And they're ready yes. to vote now. Uh -huh. so you're, mm -hmm. You see the defense. They don't often want to leave. Take no chance. Uh, I think we'll go back. Uh, we'll go back to the I think we're ready for the original motion now. And I would like to ask. Um, Four people, if they will be responsible for the um, counting the votes. 
we have circulated to you uh, these slips of paper so that you can vote uh, secretly. I believe this is the desire. And if Ms. Wade, Mrs. Nancy Mahaffey, <coughs> Sister Elizabeth Ann, Ms. Charity Wells, We'll initial your vote so you go to the... Miss Barfield, the substitute motion was lost. We're ready to go back to the original motion. The original motion was not put. Yes, Miss Barfield made the original motion. We're voting on it now by secret ballot. This is what your secret ballot says. You didn't say who you want to the parable. What is it, Miss Gitchfield? We need to vote. We're going to vote this way. This is the ballot, but we need to get that vote on the floor out of the way. Which one? The, the Miss Jones. Uh, that's the motion was wrong. That's right. So we go back to the room. We're voting on this side. And this is what we're doing with the That's clear. That's clear. Is that all right, Mr. McCullough? Thank you. understood that we are ready now to vote on the original motion made by the chairman of the committee and has been done in the past. We are asking you to do this by secret ballot on the slips of paper that were circulated to you when you came to the meeting. Is this clear? Are there any questions? Yes, yes ma'am. If it's yes or no, if you're voting yes, that you are uh, approving the proposed changing in bylaws, yes. If you are disapproving, check no. On this, yes, Ms. Sack. Yes, ma'am. To the tellers. We have four tellers here. While the votes are being counted, we will continue with the uh, order of business, the agenda. At this time, I'll ask Ms. Hudson if she'll give us the report of the Legislation Committee. Hudson. Mr. Siebert, L.R. Siebert, who is Executive Secretary of the Board 
of reasons phoned me last night about 10 o'clock and told me that I had wildly liberty to announce to this meeting today that the scholarship funds would be available as of July the 10th. Now, the budget has not been approved. However, Mr. Stephen advised me that there was no opposition in the General Assembly to the item in the budget which pertains to the scholarship for nurses and paramedical workers. Am I right on that, Mr. McClellan? Or you don't want to don't commit yourself, you don't have to, but there's always opposition to everything by some <laughs> 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 serious opposition to this. Uh, I mean, that's a half thing. Not the not the the play probably on the desk with the control of the bill of hand And this is this the ball that and any any person wishing to get information about the scholarship and to uh, make the scholarships available for a young woman should write to Mr. L. R. Stevers and ask for an application for a scholarship for nursing. And that application will be on the way to the, the Board of Regents at uh, in the State Council. That is the address, Mr. L. R. Siebert, S C I B E R T. And it's uh, in the uh, state office building and uh, the Board of Regents. That's the address. And those scholarships will be available. We're very happy about that. Now, on the national level, President Johnson has introduced his uh, Medicare bill, and it was uh, House Bill Number One and Senate Bill Number One. So it's um, he hopes that it will have um, get uh, have priority over the other bill. And uh, as soon as that bill has been printed, we will get copies. It uh, just came off the press on the 8th. We have not had time to get a copy to study it to know what is in the bill, but we will have a meeting at that time to see what is, um, what action we should take. Thank you, Ms. Hudson and Mr. McClellan for this information. With these two people active over there, our needs should, should certainly be met, shouldn't they? Uh, may we have a report from Ms. Davis, Membership Committee Chairman? Uh, we have 300 new members from 1965 um, so far, and that is an increase of 47 this time last year. And we only have three applications uh, saying the new members to be approved. That uh, we haven't approved them yet. We haven't got their references in. Thank you, Ms. Davis. have a report public relations. We'll have our big program in May and we hope to have all out published the program at that time. Do you know of anything newsworthy? We appreciate you giving your suggestions. This is the report of the public, uh, public relations committee. Committee on professional practice. Ms. Ryan, you have a report. We haven't met yet, but we plan to have a meeting, call meeting real soon. I'm going to have a uh, conference with Ms. Dixon and she's going to help me staff the program. Thank you. <coughs> Special committees, careers, Ms. Mallory, have a report. Insurance, Mrs. Fitzpatrick, I believe she's here. All of you know Ms. Fitzpatrick. Stand up, Ms. Fitzpatrick. <laughs> she's chairman of our committee on insurance and she'll take your application anytime. I have no report to make at present because I have just received this appointment uh -huh. and I haven't had a chance to do anything. Thank you. <coughs> Is there a report from the administrative section? Ms. Holly, I believe, left. Did you leave a report with anybody? They have a meeting coming up. Ms. Davis, don't you know about it? Is everybody invited to that dinner meeting or the administrative section? Would you like to tell them about it? Well, I think some of the members from the administrative section would know more about it. She did announce at the head nurse meeting uh, that we had uh, uh, 
Wednesday, uh, that they would have a meeting at George Baptist, and um, they were, everyone was invited to attend. It didn't have to be an administrative session. Thank you. Did they say what date that was in case anyone called me? I don't think it was. I don't remember. It was February. Um, do you all remember? Second Tuesday. Right. Second Tuesday, but I don't recall it in February. Sister Elizabeth Ann is. Out is there a report from the EACT section? General duty, Ms. Thornton. Occupational health, Ms. Sanders. Private duty, Ms. Zerp. Public Health, Ms. Opham. <coughs> Report of Alumni Associations, Crawford Long, Ms. Holland. Emory, Mrs. Cannon. George Baptist, Ms. Hudson. Thank you, Ms. Hudson. Graded number one, Mrs. Bernice Dixon. <coughs> number two, Mrs. Jones. She was here, I guess she left. Piedmont, Mrs. <coughs> Kimball. St. Joseph, Ms. Parker. Is there old business anyone would like to bring up at this time? Any of the officers have any old business? <coughs> I don't have any. Then, by way of new business, I would like to announce a two-day conference on legal aspects on nursing sponsored by the Medical College of Georgia, March 4 and 5. Ms. This bill, did you want to add anything to that? You are accepting applications, I believe. Applications, and they're beginning to come in right well. We'd like to have everybody participate. It'll be at the Fulton County Health Department. March 4 and 5. Legal aspects on nursing. Also, there will be a parliamentary workshop at GSNA headquarters uh, at 10 o'clock, January 21, an orientation workshop for newly elected officers the following day, January 22, at headquarters. Ms. Dixon, would you like to say, add anything to this? You're accepting now. Um, I wonder if there are anyone here uh, who would like to indicate your your interest, and so Miss Dixon would have an idea of who is going from Fifth District. <coughs> uh, maybe you'll change your mind or find a way later. We'd like to remind the sections and organized groups that nominees for the ballot of the district and the Georgia State Nurses Association are to be submitted no later than May 1st, which means that at your February meeting, you might make this announcement and uh, names be reported 
uh, at your uh, April meeting available to the committee in May. I think the information regarding what officers are to be elected this year will be sent to you by mail. Does anyone have any other announcements? I thought that was next month. They didn't give us that information. Would you like to make it, Ms. Zerb? You mentioned it at the board yes. the other night, but you didn't give us any information to include with it. I don't have the folder. The southeastern I'm sorry, Ms. Harris. I thought uh, I thought you wanted this announced at the next meeting, the March meeting. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've been asked to announce that the advisory committee to the <coughs> registry meeting scheduled for Monday, January 18 at 3.30 will be deferred to a later date. You will be no notified um, later about this. <coughs> Are there any announcements other than this, Ms. Sack? I would like to ask a question, and I don't know if this is proper to do it this way, but all you can do is tell me I was in proper idea. At the last meeting, we had a movie given by a commercial company, which was given instead of our starters, instead of the meeting, which put the meeting at the very, very late time. And I know most of us, or a lot of us, are kind of in a hurry in the afternoon to get home because their family is waiting for them. And I, for one, felt real resentful that my time in the meeting which I attended, which I wanted to attend because it was this important business to be discussed, that part of the time, it was about a half an hour or longer, was taken up with a commercial film for a commercial purpose. And this wasn't anything just, it, was, it is supposed to be, I guess, a flight for a nurse but it's still a commercial adventure. And I felt real resentful. I left early because I just couldn't stay that late. And I know a lot of other nurses leave early. And if the order of business could be first, and then somebody's interested in seeing the movie, that was a beautiful movie. Then I think it should come afterwards, but not take up our time at 4.30 and then keep us here till 6.30. I think it adjourned at 6.30 the other day. Thank you, Ms. Sachs. Are there any other comments about the... I might tell you, we had a movie from A&A, &A, a very good film that we were hoping to show that very evening, That's but right. we didn't I get to see that. it. We, we had hoped that the signals got mixed that day. <laughs> but at any rate, we, we were very unhappy that we... And we do have to get out of game today at 6.30. Yes, Ms. Sachs. Like I would like to move that we not show commercial films or have commercial speeches at our 5th uh, District program until business and program have been taken care of and then these can be included at the end of the week. Would you like to vote on this motion? Is there further questions been called? Thank you. Those in favor, please say aye. Aye. 
contrary, no. The motion is carried. We'll have no further commercial film until the business is taken. Not to have representation. You know, on the article nine, the way it says, why, why it should not be done the old way, why it should be changed. Would you like me to explain one little note in your like, condition? Yes, ma'am. When it's safe. I've been along with this back there a while ago, and I know it. You will find in that little notation to your right where it says partial conformity. The ANA model law, which we have and which uh, there was some question about, was followed as closely as it was humanly possible. No committee is represented on the board in the National Organization at all. This district had the chairman of the Registry Committee on the board, and in the proposed amendments originally, they wanted it to adhere to the model standards. But because we go partially is the very fact that Georgia State Nurses Association Committee on Bylaws recommended, and I have it in writing, these are the, I think I will just take one minute to tell you that every effort was made to give you this concisely, exactly as it was in time to be circulated. These were given to us at the convention. The meeting had gone to press November the 8th. I believe it was. I came back on November 8th, so it was November 6th. It was sent to your print, printer immediately, but these were the additions that had to be got in at that time. And that was one of the recommendations from the state committee on bylaws that she be made a member of the board, ex officio member of the board, without vote. So she's getting more privilege than the national picture. Uh, here is your national bylaws. They took, in addition to the model form, on that, the minimum standard from the Georgia State Nurses. And there's no mention in here that any committee chairman be on the board. All committees, that's, that's the way the organization is supposed to be through the committee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, it's not. Read the beginning of your, read the beginning of the notation on your thing today. Nothing is compulsory except those that have asterisks there that have to coincide in conformity. No, no, but I'm explaining. No, I'm explaining why the word partial conformity is there. Is the fact that they were observing the recommendation from the state. If she is official, that means she has no vote. She has through her private use. Madam Chairman, I wonder what the date on that model form is. It's just, the, oh, that's what threw us late. It didn't come out until around September time. It so came out just in time for to be done by the state. That's why we're late on no, the I model. I mean the model form. Yeah. The model yeah. form yeah. is the very latest, and it came in It came in late is the very reason why all of this delay has been that it could not be done in your September meeting. And the only reason, now there was some question by the private duty nurses, why the old and new was not printed in your meter. 
All of the old that we had was, except that one committee on race. Your motion, do you know? Who second Miss Wood? We'll now hear from the report of the tellers who counted the votes for the proposed changes of bylaws. Wait. There were 190 ballots cast. 190. One was. Um, Cast, but the uh, member did not vote, so it had to be thrown out. There were 108 yes and 81 no. See how arithmetic goes. According to Article 20, Amendment Section 1, bylaws may be adopted, amended, or repealed at any annual meeting or regular meeting by two-thirds vote of the members present. In order for this to have been carried, we would need to have 126 affirmative votes. There were only 108, so the motion is lost. 108. Affirmative, 81 negative. We need 126 to carry the motion. And the motion is lost. Your suggestions for proposed change in bylaws will be accepted by the bylaws committee, and we'll see what can we, we can do for you in the future. Motion is lost. Are there any questions you'd like to ask the parliamentarian? Does this mean now that the registry committee will be appointed? No. Stays as it is. I know, but uh, is there a registry committee appointed now? No. But don't our the, uh, call for a standing committee of the, the registry committee? The action was that the uh, study committee act as the registry committee until another one is approved or named. And with this, you see, we have no nothing to go on until we go back and work over this again. Well, are our present bylaws in effect? Yes, they're in effect, but we voted. Well, this will go to the board, I think, for consideration. Yes, he can tell you. Uh, the question is, Mr. McClendon, uh, will the registry committee, uh, as it is, our present bylaw state because these, uh, these new amendments were defeated. So our present bylaw stands. And in our present bylaws, Understanding Committee, Section 10, there is supposed to be a registry committee composed of not less than 11 members as follows. One administrative member, one private duty representative from each alumni of the district, two private duty representatives from the alumni other than the fifth district, 
and the chairman of the crazy duty section with full voting powers, and then it goes on to say what the duties of this committee are. Now, this committee has not been appointed and has not been functioning. And the question is that since we are now and are functioning under our present bylaws, we ask if this registry committee would now be appointed and be permitted to assume its function. It's the registry I'm not trying to board this question. Yeah. It's the board. Yeah, it'll go to the board to be appointed. I said, what have you filed all along now? This motion has to say everybody will be out for it. No change in the amount provided by the continue the management and came up at this last meeting right there <coughs> there is uh, there isn't anything in the bylaws that says that a standing committee can be dissolved by the executive board that I can find now maybe it's there and I can't find it well, it's there I believe I mean usually a standing committee if it's in the bylaws has to uh, be dissolved by the membership and by the the voting body. Well, then the question was it, uh, to the president is, is the registry committee now to be appointed according to our present bylaw and be and permitted to function? would be unless it's clear by this action of the board of mm -hmm. action to Justice Ferguson, to which I'm not familiar on um, the I do think I'll be part of the meeting to which that's how it's discussed. But I don't recall that in any way. Well, Thank you. 
who dissolved such a committee and do what was done, make a study of it prior to the appointment then of another committee since this new bylaw was law that was proposed, the proposed bylaw was law. I think you will find somewhere where I have so ruled on the theory that the board of directors is charged with the overall supervision and direction of the association and yes. fall within their prerogative to take in steps in the interest of the association. This is my That is uh, indicated. Madam Chair, am I correct in that uh, we voted at uh, the last board meeting uh, to uh, retain this uh, committee, the study committee, as a until this meeting in January. That's right. That's right. That's right. Then your minutes will be the last board meeting. By the board. That's right. That's what I said in the first place. Let's go back to the board. That's the motion was made we postpone the appointment of the registry committee until after the district meeting in January and that the registry study committee function until that time. That was Carol. <laughs> Is it the duty of the uh, executive board to appoint committees? Uh, appoint it committees. Would be, but I'm just saying that the, uh, that the registry committee <laughs> provided for in the bylaws be activated and permitted to function. Just a minute, please, till we clear this. And this was by action of the board that the state committee was appointed and thought necessary in light of the first circumstance to get to not to eliminate the existence of the registry committee, but suspend its activities for the time. That dissolve, the dissolve the registry committee. Uh, Temporary. Executive Boys Board appoint the registry committee as provided in the bylaws and the committee be permitted to function. Does that sound all right? Well, who seconded this? I seconded it to get it on. All right. Is there further discussion? Yes. I don't think that is necessary because the study committee has already recommended that this committee be reappointed and Function. The study committee has recommended that to the board, and it has to wait until now, and that is not necessary for it to be reappointed. It will be reappointed. Well, that's what, well, that was the question when we first started this out. We said, we asked the president if, since there, the proposed bylaws were defeated, would the registry committee be appointed? This was the question. That's and recommendation has been made. Until after the voting of these bylaws, and this is the understanding that I would be willing to withdraw my motion. And the next board meeting, the committee will be appointed. 
that's understood. Uh, Madam Chairman, may I say that uh, I don't feel that any of the membership, uh, I'm, don't, I'm speaking for myself as well as some of the others, I don't feel that we uh, object to the study committee in the least, that the executive board is thoroughly within their rights to appoint a, a special committee and give them functions to do. And I think that anybody would agree that this is within the functions of the executive board. So that if the executive board would decide that they wanted this study committee to stay on and continue <coughs> the study, that's fine. We have no objections to that. Well, the study committee recommended that the committee be reappointed. And now all they're waiting for is for another board meeting to take care of. Well, now, this is where we I'm thought that we got. We didn't mean it personally. We meant that we had just had a little friction and that I think to clarify things and this may bring it back forward if the private beauty section had been given some information to me I believe they would have felt much happier. Uh, 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 Chairman is uh, on the board. board but every board meeting. <laughs> she attends every meeting. Which was Tuesday night, and there's Miss Mason. We have had a meeting since you last morning. Well, the same night. So, Tuesday night, one. That's one of the good things about the If my second will withdraw her second, I will withdraw my mother. I never did find out who it was. Well, the discussion has gone on regardless of yes. the second. Well, I seconded it. Yes. I was too discussed it, but uh -huh. I, was, I uh, didn't have a microphone. Ruth, uh, <laughs> Ms. Jones says that if, uh, well, no if you are willing to withdraw, she is. I withdraw. Yes, Ms. Woody. Well, it's not necessary. Madam Chairman, I'm going to move. Madam Chairman, I move that uh, all discussion insofar as Proposed bylaws that the suggestion of the that all discussion be deferred until the next fifth district executive board meets. I want to ask one question now before we take it up. I need to know. We have to perform a BMA on the news, and for the young graduate nurses, to make it authentic and authorize you to send out all, all the materials. The young graduates give us uh, half year, not half year, but half due for one full year following her registration. And that has to conform with the ANA. It does with the state and with the The uh, The old bylaws would not. We give we give half your membership to them, but the, as stated in the proposed provision, as I recall, they have to get the amount. As I recall, your membership is lumped together as a whole, thirty-two minutes or something. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's broken down in such categories. We have. I don't think you can increase your views in order to take care of this increase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to conform with A and A on the news, and uh, I mean uh, nationally and from the state, and we should do it locally from the district to give them the 16 and 25 benefits. Thank you. Thank you. That can be done at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. We have a motion before the House, if you will please withhold your discussion till we get a second. Oh, she's writing. Ruth will bring it down when she's finished. Yeah, as soon as she writes it, she's writing it. At 
the annual meeting by any places they voted it then to start this year? That's national. <laughs> Is it second? Mm -hmm. The second. Was there a second to your motion, Miss Wood? Is it? Who is there? Kirby. Thank you. Mayor Wood, if you say second, Kirby. This is withdrawn. Mm -hmm. The motion is all discussion concerning the changes or other business that would be affected by the vote on the proposed changes in bylaws of the Fifth District Georgia State Nurses Association be suspended at this meeting and all matters be referred to the Fifth District Georgia State Nurse Association Board for consideration. This has been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion, questions? Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Motion is carried. Does this mean then that I hear a motion to adjourn? That's that carried, didn't it? Ms. May, move we adjourn. Thank you.